Welcome back to His and Hers Movie Podcast. This is episode number 35, featuring the killer crocodile survival spelunking horror sequel to the 2007 survival horror film Blackwater. This one's called Blackwater Abyss. Joining me tonight, as always, is my co-host Carly. Hi. And we are... Oh, did I say who I am? Um, did you? No. I am JP, podcasting out of Southwest PA, in Carly's house currently. It is 9-29-2020. Right, which means... It is October Eve. Which means we have to call pumps. No, that's we don't do that till like last day of October. No, remember the first time we did, we have a live stream to prove it. We carved those pumps. It was a very hit live stream, I recall. <laughs> well, do you want to do it on the thirtieth? Because I, I do work. You work the thirtieth? Yes. Oh, well, how are we gonna carve pumps? When I get off at midnight. <clears throat> Right, dude. Sure. You really want to do it, or you want to just wait till we're free, like Sunday or something? I would like to wait till we're free, like Sunday or something. Okay. Maybe we'll do it on Sunday. Yes. Pumpkin season. Yes. So, I'm you have any plans for October since we are on the eve of October? By the time you hear this, it will be October. Yes. Very ex- I can't believe it's the eve of. Wait. It's not the eve of October. There's one more day of this September. Well, technically. It's There's October Eve Eve. Two more days because it's midnight. Anyway, um, yes, I plan on watching moves in October, and I would like to go to more haunted houses. I did go to one the other night with my friend and her, some of her family, and uh, it was a fun time. I enjoy going to them. I don't really you know, find them overly scary anymore, but I just love looking, I love looking at the set designs people come up with in haunted houses. They're always pretty impressive, especially this one I just went to was cool because it was like a house. It it was one of those, like, had several attractions where there was a house, regular haunted house, and then there was, like, another house that was a walkthrough that was supposed to be, like, a quarantine-y type of set up, uh, you know, one of those, like, uh, biohazard thing has happened, go through this, and blah, blah, blah. And then the third one was, like, in the woods, where you walked through the woods to, um, different sets that they had set up, and then they had some people hiding, actually, in the dark woods where there was no light, which was pretty cool, and then you walk out, and it's actually a maze to get out, a corn maze, which was pretty easy to get through, it wasn't anything, uh, crazy, um, but... I thought it was pretty cool, you know, this one I go to, it's, they change it up every year, some places don't really change what they do, unfortunately, but this one does sometimes, like, the thing in the woods will be, like, an interactive game, or sometimes the thing that was, like, the biohazard thing will be more of a theatrical experience. This one, you know, was kind of just three different haunted houses in a way, but I think it's because, um, given the years that we have and they didn't have as many people working, that's probably why they went that route, but... It was fun, and I plan on doing that hopefully some more, because October goes by really fast, and of course you can only really do that on the weekends, but hopefully I shall be able to hit up some more. What about you, buddy? Well, I had a question. So, do you, did they, like, make you, like, space you guys out, like, a ton? Not really. No, they just kind of like, whatever. Like, we wore masks, and it seemed like there weren't as many people in the house jumping out, and, like... You know, they always have some roaming people just on the grounds, and they had Matt. Well, it it was actually funny. There was a guy dressed up in a legit, like, quarantine-looking suit, like, all hazmat suit, if you will, like, yellow, and had a black uh, gas mask over his face, and he was carrying around a bottle of cleaner, and we were joking. We were like, what if he's not part of the attraction? His job is actually just to clean up after everybody, but... Um, so he was dressed like that, then there was, like, some dude dressed like a clown, and, of course, he had a mask, and then some other people, and, uh, yeah, pretty much so, you just had to wear masks, um, it wasn't like the lines were really that spaced out, or they were controlling it or anything like that too much, but then again, you know, it's, like, mainly outside, and you, 
they did put us with like another group so it's like they didn't really even space that out either but either way you know they they space them out typically anyway by like letting six people at a time go in so there's that but it's it was pretty normal in my opinion so that is that is how i like to spend my halloweens really yes uh, I'm not, like, huge into haunts. Yeah. But I do... I do like them. I was a lot more into them when I was a kid. I think the problem that I have with, like, haunts is just that I never have the time to do them. As you know, like, I usually work most weekends. Uh, and now I work most evenings, so it kind of takes me out of haunt season. Right yeah, um, I understand that. I, when I was in high school, I used to be in the marching band, as you know. And that Nerd. Was, as you know, it was very fun, and the football games were on Friday, and sometimes we would have parades or band festivals on set, so a lot of times I did not get to really go to them either, and then I tried to work at one for... You did a, work at one. What do you mean, try? Because I didn't have a great experience, so to me it was like an effort. You tried to get me to work there. Yeah, that's when I first met you, and I wanted you involved in my life, and then you just said, yeah, I'll come show up, and then did it. And then I gave you free tickets, and you were like, yeah, maybe me and my cousin will come, and then you guys didn't. I waited every night for you guys, and then I never saw you. But anyway, yeah, I worked at one for a season, like, out of high school, and uh, it wasn't the best. I mean, it, it's, like, not the best time It's probably in the, world. the worst one around here, honestly. I mean, it's it's... That hayride's actually the world's, like, oldest hayride. No. Yeah, it is. It's the world's the... oldest hayride? Yeah, like, operating, like, hayride. When did it start? Maybe America. <laughs> maybe America, okay? Maybe, maybe not the southwestern world. Pennsylvania. No, like, America. It's actually the... I swear, dude. I'm looking it up. But <laughs> Alan's hayride. I used called. to go there all the time when I'm a kid. You're not going to teach me anything about Alan's hayride. Anyway, the Allen family, they have a hayride, and Tavern of Terror was something that opened up that used to be a bar, and my a cousin of mine actually owned it, or didn't own it, but he's the one who fixed it up, and he gave me a job there. I was like a creepy nurse. I mean, it, it had fun stuff. It was fun actually scaring people and acting, but didn't really care for some of my co-workers there, and it also just took up all my time on the weekends, so it just, that's like the thing about working at those places, I always wanted to work at one, then I did, then I realized like, well, I can't really enjoy my Halloween, so that was the one and only time I did it, I was going to do it the next year, and then I kind of bailed out last minute, but, you know, it's fun, are you looking it up? Yeah, so it says, <clears throat> Allen's Haunted Hayride started in October 1979 by two brothers, Richard and Ronald Allen right. and ran in conjunction with the then Uniontown Greater JCs. They operated these hayrides together for years. Then the two brothers operated the hayrides on their own. But hayride hauling actually started in the 1960s by Ralph Allen, father of Richard and Ronald Allen. He hauled hayrides for various church and scout groups. Richard and Ronald got into the business of hauling hayrides with their father and then by themselves. This all came out of the need to financially assist their dairy farm. Today, Ronald and his son Clinton, don't ever name your kid Clinton. Well, you don't talk shit on these people. <laughs> along with their immediate families, continue to farm and raise 250 registered dairy cows along with uh, operate that's a typo along with operating Allen's hayrides throughout the years of the course of the hayride route has been altered a road was put through a forest and bonfires carnival rides and games and added to the hayride attraction bonfires are by reservation only the carnival rides are included with the price of the hayride ticket is there carnival rides um they used to have a Ferris wheel and stuff there, and honestly, the past few years, I think they did away with it. I don't know, though. In 2015, the Tavern of Terror was added. The nation's oldest haunted hayride. Quote. Nation. Really? 
like the United States. Right, yes. <laughs> That's cool. We have all kind of cool stuff in Pennsylvania horror history. We created yes. zombies. But, I mean, we did, yes. But, I mean, the, ha- the hayride is nice. It's just they don't really ever change it up. And it's also kid-friendly. I mean, there's actually a SpongeBob part in it. And that, it, it, which I'm, is nice I'm with, to bring kids. I'm with. Yeah. Like and you, they do bonfires. They have, like, a nice bonfire set You can't always take your kids to Fright Farm. Yeah. Even though I went when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I want to do Fright Farm this year. I haven't done it in a while. Yeah, I did it last year. and Was that your first year? Yeah, it was okay. There was a point I where... I thought it was, like, the best one around here, honestly. That's what everyone says. But there was... It was really... It was going very well. It's very long, too. So that's nice because there is a hayride, and that takes you out to the actual house, and then that goes on forever, and then you go outside and then go into another house, and then, like, another one, and it's pretty cool, and then but... there's a, like, little corn maze at the end, usually. Yeah. Yeah, I think that... Yeah. Um... There's usually a slide, too, but there wasn't last year. But anyway, I was going to say there was a part where I don't know what went wrong, but everyone was, like, crammed together, and I don't think it was supposed to be like that because it just completely took away from the effects because we were all, like, walking, like, side by side. Like, we caught up with the other group, and then another group caught up with us from behind. And I mean, it is – they usually are, like, pretty not spaced out. Honestly, it's usually like huge groups. Well, I mean that one in particular. That's like the only one I've ever really had that issue with. No, I mean I'm talking about that. Oh, one. I thought you meant that place is usually yeah. not that. It's not as spaced out as other ones. But uh, did I ever tell you the time where my dude was dating a girl whose dad operated one of the tractors there? Yes. Yeah. Well, long story short. Because it was like 25 bucks to get in. Yeah. It's it like, probably is like 30 now. I think it is 30. But when I was a kid, it was like 10. <laughs> yeah. So it's like 25 when I was a teen or, you know, late teen, early 20s. I can't remember. And uh, this girl was like, uh, my dad can get us, get you guys in for free. You know, my dad works here. I could get you guys in for free. And we're like, sweet, you know, like, because we didn't even have any money yeah. that night. And so my buddy Jot picks up me and my friend Martin um, and Marty. So Marty is the friend that picked us, me and Martin up. And they dri- we drive out to the, the Fright Farm and we get there and we're like, yo, where do you want us to meet you at? And she's like, oh, meet me at the pumpkin patch. And we're like, okay. So like there's the big building with like the where you go in and like you have to walk down some stuff and blah, blah, blah. And, then there's like a big like festival area with like bonfires and right. that's where you get your ride there's like food and stuff down there right uh and then like there's literally a farm next to it like with pump like a big pumpkin pumpkin patch and so we walk down through the pumpkin patch i'm like dude we're like w- and a pumpkin patch is not filled with like it's not a cornfield it's like a w- huge open area right. with like pumpkins on the ground so you mm-hmm. stick out like a sore thumb <clears throat> and we're just like walking down there and I'm like just I, I feel like we're not supposed to be here and we get like to the end of the pumpkin patch and she's like he calls her and he's like where are you and she's like oh just like keep walking down till you see a, a, a fence and climb over it <laughs> and we're like so like we're just sneaking in then and she's like yeah basically and we're like so what do we need you for yeah. <laughs> you know and it was literally that like we snuck into this place and like she like it was so i don't even know like how more people don't do that because it's so obvious like (laughs) it could or or, like it i guess it's so obvious that nobody tries it but like we literally just walked like cut around the whole place and just ended up in the back but we walked through an open field to do it it was weird and nobody said anything so well when i went last year when i went they do a thing where I think they stamped your hand with a number, and now they have, like, a scoreboard-looking thing up top that'll have, like, number 45, and then it'll be, like, I'll be number 46, and then they call you up, and then they check your hand to see if you're in that group. Okay, so... Because it's so crowded there. I think there was something like that, but I forgot this detail. Once we got in to, like, the little festival area, we met up with her, and then she walked us, like, down the road and her dad stopped the tractor and and put us on we were the first people on then he went and picked everybody else up yeah 
and then she was like, see, I did it. Yeah, so technically, she did, but we had to sneak in first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, pretty pretty fun. I used to go like every year, like it was like a, I went like multiple times a year sometimes, because it was like, that was like my place. Mm. Um, yeah, it was super fun. I, I used to love going there. It was cool. Uh, but yeah, I always liked that one because it's a hayride and a haunted house. Yeah, and the hayride was pretty good. Like it was like there was actually a part that was really scary to me. But um, and there's a there was a really cool part where they had like a a car all of a sudden like its headlights come on behind you and then someone starts driving and they had like Freddy Krueger standing on top of it and then he like yeah. jumps on the thing. I was like Jesus, like so. Yeah, they used well to do done. some really cool back in like the 90s when I used to go. They used to like do a lot of like the the big four horror villains. Yeah. Like they would have they like I remember one time they built like a whole house that like was down in the field. It was like I, I doubt it was a whole house, but it was like the it was like you could see inside. It was like a dollhouse, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Like how you could see from the front view. Yeah. And it had like na- like a girl that looked like Nancy like sitting in a chair, and then like Freddy like popping out of like the thing and it was like real cool yeah. it was like he was watching a play or something but um yeah so uh anything happening this week this week this week this week um not really nothing exciting i am to Today when we're recording is Monday actually and I am off tomorrow that's why we're able to record right now at the, the good old time of midnight uh, because just gotta take my mom to the doctor because she broke her ankle like in 50 places uh, about two months ago so she's gonna maybe get the cast off maybe not but either way I took the day off of work and that is exciting because I hate working um, but other than that I mean nothing I don't really have anything exciting planned this week. It is October, so I shall start putting my 31 Days of Horror hair on the YouTube, and I that shall be I started that. putting mine on myself. Well, that is fake. Why? Because it is, you're in 31 day, 30 Days of September still. Yes. Right. 31 Days of Horror. You're in 30 Days of September. <laughs> 31 Days of Horror in September. No, little guy. Yes. Uh, yeah, I am going to start uploading my ninth annual 31 Days of Horror. Nine years. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah. I enjoy doing that on YouTube because it's like a good way to get YouTube videos up there. Like, yeah. Sometimes. Ignore like the first couple years of mine though. <laughs> no, I shall watch them all. No. Yeah. We shall all watch them together. Um, but... Yeah, I think that's, like, about it. And this is my cat. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so let's uh, get into some things that we watched. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I shall go first this time. You shall. Okay, so I left, left off on Scissors last last week. These are, these are I'm still playing catch up here because uh, we took some time off. Mm-hmm. Um, I had mentioned, did I do Freddy's Dead last week at all? No, you just said, you like complained <laughs> a bunch about how you forgot to put it on your list. I don't right, think you so I it. went and put it on my list. Uh, so that was per my run of 1991. Uh, the final <laughs> movie. per my run through 91. It was, it was, uh, two th- it was my 65th movie, so I lied on the show. It was actually 65. I see. Freddy's Dead was always one that I really liked. In fact, it was one of my... It was my favorite at one point. What? Yeah. So, the very first Nightmare on Elm Street I ever seen was Part 4. Mm-hmm. And I used to love Part 4. And then I rented Freddy's... Probably the second one I ever seen was Freddy's Dead. And I love that one because of, like, the video game scene and the Carlos scene. And I just thought it was cool. Like, Super Freddy. Or, wait, that's part five. Never mind. I like that part, too. <laughs> See, when I was a kid, I liked all the dumb stuff because it, it, it was still scary to me back then. I never saw it as comedy. Right. But I just saw it as cool. Um, 
And then, you know, years later, obviously, I saw part three, which is the best one. And I saw, like, some of the, you know, part two and part five, and I saw all of them. And I, I actually, one of the last ones I ever seen, no, the last one I ever seen was part one. Oh. Yeah, crazy. Wacky. Yep, I'd seen all the sequels before part one. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, in my head pretty fresh, but I've always liked it, and I've always kind of defended it a little bit, I, like, in terms of, like, I know that it's dumb, but, like, there's still some cool stuff, too. And watching it this time, I, I definitely didn't like it as much as I thought I would, and I knew that it was bad, so I, I you know already had like kind of lower expectations but yeah there's it's just kind of lame at times but like the stuff that I like about it which is kind of what I like to focus on is I think the kid being like the last of the Elm Street kids like Freddy's like killed them all Mm -hmm. is kind of a cool concept and I like that he's stuck in Springwood and he's trying to get out of Springwood like that this it's almost like the myth of Freddy is contained to this area where he existed because nobody knows about him and they have to kind of know about him to fear him to dream of him to for him to get there but he's out there spreading all the 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 stuff and you know i like that aspect but everything else kind of sucks besides the carlos death that that thing is cool right yeah the move sucks dude the carlos death which one's carlos the death one? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's alright. And then the best part is when she's like, Freddy's dead at the end. <laughs> I feel like that was just like such a massacre of the franchise. They were probably just like, okay, well, yep, he is. Yeah. Yes. Alright. <clears throat> Next up, number 379 for me. Are you writing down 379? No. <laughs> Why? I'm right. What, 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 what movie is it? Castle Freak. Okay. Uh, 1995 Stewie Gordon Shut up dude Uh, This one follows Jeffrey Combs And his wife As they move into A haunted castle That he inherited from This duchess Or uh, what do they call him I think it's duchess Something Uh, And his daughter is blind she was in a car accident when she was a kid. Jeffrey Combs was driving. He was drinking. It killed her, his son, and it blinded his daughter. And his <laughs> wife still seems to hold some resentment over that. <laughs> yeah. I started watching this movie on Joe Bob one night, and, like, I was, like, wanting to watch it real bad. And then I fell asleep, like, before I barely got it. And I got pretty much to the part where he's dreaming about the car accident, and that was it. Yeah. And Barbara Crampton plays the wife. Uh, This movie is really cool. And it's that, like, the cool, like, castle atmosphere is there. The creature, the freak, is really cool. He's, like, gross looking. And um, he sees, like, Jeffrey Combe, like, eating out this chick, this prostitute. Mm. So he basically captures the prostitute and does the same thing but i don't like i like he's i i don't think he's licking i think he's like he took he's taking eating out to like the actual you know no literally no yeah so he's his face all bloody and gross Ewey. yeah nasty either that or she was on her period funny <laughs> um but yeah it's sleazy it's gross it's cool it's atmospheric it's good stuff the Blu-ray looked good. I, I finally picked up the Blu-ray from Full Moon, which it is a Full Moon film. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did. Did you? Yes. I don't think you knew that. I knew that. I actually knew that because I was like, wow, this movie looks decent for a Full Moon film. What? You did not. Yes. <laughs> you're, you, you're a horror novhass. No, dude. Yes. I know, like, every move. <laughs> <laughs> Name one move. I bet I know it. Castle Shriek. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, I gave that an 8 out of 10. One of my favorite Stuart Gordon films. Uh, then I watched Session 9. This is number 380, by the way. That's just boring. 
Uh, session nine follows a couple of guys who are like I don't know what they do like asbestos removal or yeah something. It, and there's this like old uh, mental asylum, and they get a job at this mental asylum to like clear out all this asbestos. It's like a three week job. Uh, the guy who runs the crew is in real need of a of a job so he offers to do it in two weeks and the dude's like all right well you know you were sure you can do it in two weeks and then the deal still isn't like going through so he's like i'll do it in one week and like his whole crew's like dude one week this is a three-week job so they basically have to triple time it and basically it's them not working the whole movie <laughs> <laughs> like it's them needing to get this job done in three weeks, but every scene is them standing around talking. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Because, like, the whole time... It was, like, giving me anxiety. Like, the whole time I'm, like, watching the movie, I'm like, why are these guys not working? <laughs> like, work faster. You only have three weeks. Like, they don't... They look like they're just doing the job at normal pace, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. nobody looks like they're rushing. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty cool movie. It's a lot of dialogue and a lot of relationships between the characters. At first, I couldn't tell them apart. I was like, who's who? But each of them have their own, like, backstory and, like, thing that matters. <clears throat> so that was pretty cool. And then, uh, it's very slow burn, but once you actually get to, like, some creepy moments, it is pretty effective. Uh, I think that... I think it's a film that works if you can get into the characters. Right. If you can't, like Carly, and didn't pay attention to the move. I watched the move. Did you, though? Yeah. He's like, in where do you What color is the bricks? Red. Ah, nope. They're brown. They're gray. They're wrong. Brown and gray are very different colors. No, buddy. You don't know the bricks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no, it was a pretty cool move. I dug it. Gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, oh, then I watched... This isn't a movie, but I just Dude, figured out. Dude, come on. <laughs> so, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd guy that everybody knows him as, did a video on YouTube. Hey, pay attention. I'm not, I am. I'm not. Uh, that he basically took Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 and edited it into one movie. And he talks about all of his edits and changes. And it's like one of the best videos I've ever seen. Okay, cool. I'm not adding that to your list. You don't have to add it to my list, but I just think you should watch it. Um, and it was, uh, as you know, because you're a big movie fan, uh-huh. Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 are supposed to be one movie at, at one point. Yeah. But it was like four hours, and uh, the wine scenes were like, nobody's going to go see this. Yes. And then they raped people. Right. Yes. Yes. And so they split it into two films. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's very cool. Shout out for that. Uh, then I watched Night of the Living Dead 1990. All right. Why? You forgot the D. No. <laughs> Stupid. Just go. Okay. Give your review. Uh, 1990 Night of the Living Dead. <clears throat> Have you seen this before? Yes, once. A long time ago. How long ago? Well, probably like five years ago. Five years? Yes. Uh, Night of the Living Dead 1990. Uh, it was released on Blu-ray from Twilight Time, which is a horrible company that I don't like. And they, it went out of print because it was limited. It was like 30 bucks. Right. This is back when Blu-rays were normally like 20 now, and they were charging 30. And it was like bare bones with no special features, maybe, I think, I can't remember. And the transfer wasn't even that good. And they charged 30 bucks. Went out of print. Anyway, I refused to buy it. And one day, Sony recently released it re-released it on blu-ray so i picked it up and night of the living dead 1990 finally back on blu-ray it was only 15 bucks picked it up what is that i am hot (laughs) oh but when i came in here and i was like it's hot in here it got hot because we were sitting next to each other and talking get off me uh so i popped it in figured hey this is a perfect movie to watch now you know i don't know night of living dead to to, to me, we were talking in a chat the other day about movies that get you into the hall. Or I was talking to Lacey, I think, mm-hmm. and she was asking what are movies that get you into the Halloween spirit, mm-hmm. like stuff that I wouldn't say like 
balls deep into the Halloween, but like stuff that gets you into the season. Yeah. What is it for you? Um, I guess Pet Cemetery and Halloween. What? What? Continue. What's your so you like Blair watching? You like watching Halloween in like September? No. Oh, I thought you. So you mean like September? I'm, no, I mean, like, what gets you into the spirit of Halloween? Not, like, what gets you into Halloween. Right. Um, like, because by, by, like, October 22nd, you're, like, super into Halloween and you're, like, watching the Halloween movies. But, like, what is your build-up to just start getting into the season? Um, I didn't know there would be a test. I don't really... <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't, like... I mean... What did I just say? I I you said Pet Cemetery, then I Blair Witch Project. Blair Witch, but yeah, like spooky movies like that, I guess. Okay. And the sh- I used to watch The Shining, honestly, around Halloween. Ew. You know, that's like a wintery movie. But when I was a kid, Ew. for some reason, that like for me, I wanted to watch that around Halloween. I guess because it's like, oh, Pass on Haunted Hill. That could be a good one too. Yeah, I'll, I'm down with that one. Yeah. So no. for me, like the movies, movies like that really like kind of get me into the spirit, not like movies that take place on Halloween like that that's like when you're already in the spirit yes I'm talking about the like get me into the spirit I understand so for me one of the films that I always go to along with uh any like Stephen King movies usually those uh-huh. work especially like the ones from like back in the day like Misery and you know Misery is like more winter I guess yeah um like Pet Cemetery, like you um, also, uh, It, the original It miniseries, um, Graveyard Shift is another one, but one of the other films that always get me in the mood is Night of the Living Dead, mm-hmm. the original, 1968. Right. So, that, I wanted to see if 90 had the same effect, and it did. So, it kind of was the first film that I watched where I felt in the Halloween spirit, and I watched it, like, last week or so. So, <clears throat> Perfect. You know, it was, yeah. it was perfect to watch. Uh, it's basically the same movie with a little bit more gore and a little bit of story changes, uh, but it's the core concept is the same. The most notable difference is Barbara is now like more independent and strong female character. Yeah. Um, and normally people like praise that and like it, yeah. but I want to see all women in their place, like. Suppo- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I think that it, the only thing that I don't like about it is it kind of takes away from Ben's leader character that he is, mm. and I kind of like him. So it, it, he almost plays like the second fiddle to Barbara now, and I don't like that. Yeah, I barely remember it, but I do recall Barbara is like kind of the becomes like the star almost of the film. Right. Where she's a little bitch in the bridge. Right. Uh, and then moving on to my first Survive 05. Mm-hmm. So, as you know, we used to have a run through 91. Now it is Survive 05. Oh, you thought because run rhymed with 91. That's why you called it that. <laughs> what do you think I called it that for? I just thought you were being like an idiot, like as per my run through 91. Like I thought you were just... I don't know. Like no, run, me and Dave both it, caught it. These. No, and there was dive into 1985. That was never a thing. What like, are you talking was about? That was, was I just not included in that? Like, <laughs> it's time to dive into 1985. Thanks for like letting and me. And then know it that. was run through 91. It was run through 91, and then it was survive over. And then what was 72? We didn't do it like that. 72 move. <laughs> yeah. Dave Dave came up with the this whole thing. So. I see. I see. Dave was the one that started diving in 1985. And then I said, I was like, we should call it Run Through 91. And then I was I gave him a list of options for 05. And he, he, uh, he said survive sounded okay. My other ones were like, Vibing with nine. Vibe five with oh five. <laughs> All right. All right. We could also do dive into oh five. Uh, I mean, I don't know, cause that sounds like you're always starting. Like you're just starting. Like, 
about to dive into these movies. But you, if you no, I'm heard. saying, but we did dive into 85. Oh. You're dumb. <laughs> well, that was stupid then, too. No, you're stupid. I'm telling Dave you said he's stupid. I didn't, what, Dave wasn't on 85. He listened to this show. Uh, what do you mean Dave wasn't on 85? Dave Parker? Yeah. Wait, was Dave on 85? Oh, oh wait, that's the one we just did. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I'm mixing all the times. The th- Never mind. Go on. Just tell your review. All right. So, uh, The Descent, 2005. I also watched this for the summer series. Um, let me say that I don't think that this is a masterpiece like some people do. I'm a little bit of a hater this hater on this movie. Um, and that's just because I don't think that it's like as good as people make it out to be. Like. I just feel like the characters are like really weak in this. I don't really care if they die or not. Well, I think you're only supposed to really be focused on like the main two girls. Then why have so many other ones? Well, dude, like, they're, like, the central thing, you know? It's like, uh... It's like, uh... It's like Kurt Russell in the thing. And I care about all Keith those. David you, or David you don't like Keith. Windows? <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> I ain't going with Windows. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Anyway, um... No, I don't know, dude, because it, it, it's just, like, they're going on this adventure with their friends, but, like, it's the two main girls, because you see there's, like, a thing, there's, like, this tension at the beginning, because they're, what are you doing? I'm making fun of you. No one else can see that, so yeah. who cares? <laughs> anyway, um, it's a good move. It's creepy, I feel. That's why I like it. It actually creeps me out. Right. Like, at the end, when she's all covered in whatever that is she's covered in, and then she, like, is standing there, like, all bug-eyed and, like, holds out that thing, I'm like, oh! And, uh, I was wondering how you feel about the move. Um, I think that it's good. I like the, uh, colors, although I'm not sure they always make sense. What? I don't think you're making any sense. No, like, the colors in the movie. What about the height part? It's so scary when you're trying to... The height. Like, height. They're, the part where... They're no, buddy, they're underground in this, not above ground. No, How dude. How would they have height? When she's trying to get from one side of the cave to the other, because there's no buddy, this way is to walk. in a cave. I know! <laughs> Did you watch it? <laughs> have you actually watched this movie, or are you like... Yes, I've watched it. All right. What are you talking about? Listen, dude, just... Whatever, go on move on okay so um i like the colors you know the creatures are kind of basic to me i don't really think they're that good people say they're really scary but i'm like they're just regular people looking things but with teeth yeah that's the thing I was just, that's the thing i don't care about in the movie is the creatures which are supposed to be like the main scary thing that's mm. not what creeps me out it's like them but just being stuck underground and like the tensions the, and stuff the, like that. The, the, they are, it is smart to make them albino though because they would get no light. Yeah. I like that. Um, but yeah, I can't, my, the biggest trouble I have with this movie is I don't know who the hell who is because it's so dark. It's not as hard once you watch it a few times. I watched I it twice. Well, listen, one's got short hair, one's like darker skinned. One is, like, the main blonde chick, and the other one's not the main blonde chick. And then, is there another one? Yeah, there's definitely more than that. There's No, there's only, like, five, I think. Then there's one with, like, black hair, I think. Um, Medium length hair, maybe. Uh, so that's not me. that hard. It's just, like, two blonde girls. Stop it. What? Just, dude. What? Just get nothing. Move on. Okay, uh, so... See, don't you like recording podcasts in the same room? No! <laughs> Why? I'm having an awful time. Why? Because you suck, and no one knows that you suck, and it's <laughs> annoying. We should do this on video. Um, but no, so, uh, yeah. I think that the it's the most effective thing is, like, the actual spelunking. Yeah. Because, like, when they're in that tight crevice, and, oh, dude, that's... It reminded me of uh, the Blair Witch remake, or the, the new Blair Witch movie. That movie reminded you of this. No, this reminded me of that scene in Blair Witch, the Blair Witch movie where she's in the tunnel, the hole. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. Yeah, that shit gives me anxiety. <laughs> so yeah, I still think it's a good, even great movie. I just think that like when people like rate it 10 out of 10, it's a bit much for me. So I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. Still one of the 
better movies of 05 could make my top 10, depending on how big the year is. Right? Right. All right. Uh, coming up next, we have John Dies at the End. All right. Yes, 2012. Remember the uh, 22 Shots Book Club? Neither do I. Dude, shut up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Owie, owie, help, ouch. I didn't, I didn't, shut up. <laughs> Don't bring that up. <laughs> Damn it. I knew somebody was going to say that when I watched this movie. Am I the only one who yes. said it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, what? stop. Dude, what? Come on. You scared your Leave cat. My, you did that. How'd I do it? It ran away when you I'm screamed. busy wiping my bruise, bruises. <laughs> Where'd you get those? From you. I didn't do anything. Come on. It's hot in here. <laughs> but when I came in, I'm like, it's hot in here. You're like, dude, no, it's not. You I'm like, no, seriously, it's hot. You already said that. I can't put the air on, though, because we're recording. I know, but you should have put the air on before I got but here. But it wasn't hot until you arrived. It was always hot. <laughs> it was never hot. You're right. It wasn't hot until I arrived. All right, dude. How many more movies do you have to talk about? I don't know. Like, I, I, Well, this is number 383, and I've watched almost 400 now. Dude, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> You're taking so long. I dude, dude, I've been running, rolling through these. No. Are you serious? Yeah. I've been rocking and rolling through okay, these. Okay, well, let's keep I thought you said you wanted to do this one in like an hour and a half. Yeah. So what are you saying? I'm saying like I have movies to discuss as well. Do you have a blind spot? Yeah. No. Okay. John dies at the end. Okay. Uh, have you seen this before? No. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's about this dude. It's, like, told kind of out of order, and there's, like, a lot of narration and stuff. But it's this dude who, like, is, like, dealing with this crazy stuff in the world. Like, for example, like, the like an early scene, he's, like, you know, just talking about him and his friend, like, going to help this girl. And they get to her house, and they open this freezer, and there's all these, like, uh, meats in there. And all the meats come out of the freezer and, like, form a meat body. Ewe. And then the meat body attacks them. Um... But it has, it's just, like, kind of has, like, that, like, nightmare logic type thing. But it's because there is a drug, like, a new drug on the street called, like, I forget what it's called. Um, as your neighbor is extremely loud. It's not my fault, buddy. Okay. But, um, they take this drug, and the drug is, like, almost like this living liquid. And, uh, they take it, and then they hallucinate, and, like, but John gets, like, these tele, not telekinetic, but, um like psychic powers mm -hmm. and uh he's telling all this stuff to a reporter and stuff it's pretty cool it's pretty cool um actually i think angus yeah angus scrims in it for a little cameo which is cool directed by the one the only the g the don the coscarelli right don coscarelli yes five syllables lot people with five syllable names are really cool it would actually be six, because his name's probably Donald. No, no, no. Casca, Rally, oh wait, Don. <laughs> yeah. No, not Donald, his name's not Donald. Everyone, okay. Okay, anyway, but, uh, Don Coscarelli, I forgot he directed this. You know what's super cool about this movie? What's the last Don Coscarelli movie you've seen? Phantasm Five. He didn't direct that. I thought you were a big movie. Oh, uh, wait. Wait, wait, the last move I saw of his? Yeah. I incident on and off a mountain road? I don't know. Right. Really? Long time ago, huh? That's the last movie he ever did? Well, this is. When was... Oh, this is 2012. 2012, yeah. Oh, okay. But... And then that's... Yeah, he did Bubba Hotep, incident on and off a mountain road, and then this, I think. Um, but what's crazy is you watch this movie, and it looks like some modern director made it. Yeah. Like someone, like, have you ever seen, like, I don't know, like, Odd Thomas or something? No. I haven't seen it either, but just, like, looking at the trailer, it kind of mm. reminded me of this a little bit. But, yeah, it's just, like, like, the dude didn't ever, like, he transitioned perfectly into the modern era. It's sad that he didn't get, like, a million more movies. It's Don Koss, man. Yeah, I wish it's he would It's Donnie Koss. I wish he would have done more, like, scary movies. 
<laughs> yeah, because this one's kind of a comedy. Like he too. makes, com- like he likes making comedy. Sam Raimi's so. the same way. Yeah, yeah. Like make yeah, two great very... scary movies and then comedy, 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 comedy. Yeah, they are pretty much like the same people. I hate yeah. when directors do that too. It's like annoying because I they, they like, made especially like when they make like one of the best scary. Yeah, they movies. both made like the most fantastic like atmospheric horror movies there are, and then they went on to. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Their movies aren't bad. It's just I'd rather they're not be the comedy. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think it's pretty good. Uh, then I watched Cabin Fever Patient Zero from 2014. Uh, this one's kind of a prequel. Uh, it follows these four youths who uh, the dude's getting married, so it's kind of like a little bachelor bachelor party. They go off to this island. It turns out that this island also housed this uh, genetic research lab where they ended up creating this virus sean astin's in this movie he plays patient zero like the first person infected with this stuff and uh basically it's like an outbreak on the island it, it's kind, it kind of has some gross out moments like, you know the um oops finger bang scene in cabin fever yes uh mm-hmm. well there's like one of those but with like oral sex yeah and it was kind of gross, but not, doesn't really work like the one in the original Cabin Fever did. It was okay. Uh, it was like an hour and 40 minutes, if my memory serves me correctly. And that was way too long for this crap. Uh, I actually think this is the worst of the Cabin Fever films. I, I like the remake even more. Oh, you've seen this? Yeah, I watched Oh, then you're acting like I'm, t- I'm describing it to you. And no, you're like, that's why like... I said yes when you said about the sex. Dude. But like, listen, no, but I agree. I don't think it's that good. It had too much boring stuff at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I like, stuff. I like the boring stuff. It had stuff. very boring stuff. I hated the stuff. science stuff. That's what I mean. No, no, I'm saying I liked the boring stuff at the beginning. I didn't like the science stuff. Okay. Yeah, all the science stuff was pretty boring. And then um, the... Uh, and then the stuff that was kind of cabin fever-esque, I liked. But it wasn't that good. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that bothered me is, like, the virus looked a certain way in cabin fever. Yeah. And it looks nothing yeah, like yeah, that yeah. in this. It looks like more like zombies. Yeah, it's very, like, <clears throat> generic-y. In a way. Yeah. Uh, okay, May 2002 is my next one. Uh, I rewatched this for the summer series. Angela Bettis is an absolute brilliant 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 person in fact 22 shots is doing the carry franchise in an upcoming episode and i was dreading it because it's like watching the same movie four times like it three of them are the exact same movie almost you know yeah um but one thing i will say is that it made me actually want to see carry 2002 because as you know may came out in 2002 yeah and Angela Bettis plays Carrie, which is essentially a May-like character. So maybe I'll appreciate that movie more now that some time has passed. I always say I feel like she plays like two different versions of Awkward somehow. Really? Well, that yeah, just shows to her range of acting. Yes. Like, what a weird... Ge- but that would be so weird to just be like, okay, I gotta go play Awkward in this move, and then I gotta go play Awkward in this move. You've said that joke before. No. Oh, you remember. <laughs> I was so... Oh, okay. Um, but no, she is so good in this movie. Me and you talked at length about this movie, uh, after I watched it. Yeah. It is in the 22 Shots Hall, but I think I only gave it an 8 back then. I'm, like, closer to a 10 now. It's phenomenal. Yes. That's fantastic and phenomenal together. Right. Yes. Yes. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I make up things. Uh, so yeah, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. Won't stay on it too long. Then I watched House of the Devil. 2009 as part of the teapot summer series and this is a slow burn throwback film from yesteryear where it takes place in the 80s i believe yeah like 83 maybe or something like that yeah and it follows this girl who's in college and she's really unhappy with her roommate in like the dorms or whatever so she wants to move out on her own um, she basically needs a job for this new apartment that she got, or this new house that she's renting, which is pretty sick, but she need, she doesn't have enough money to cover it yet, and she needs the payment by Monday, so she needs, like, some fast cash. Certain things about that kind of, like, bothered me watching it this time. Like, do you think somebody would really agree to a house 
to, to, to write a check on Monday when it's like Friday <laughs> and not have like any idea where they're going to get like $350. No, I mean, I could see someone saying, like, yeah, totally, I'll do it, like, with just in the heat of the moment. Yeah, like, someone like from like my free. family, but not, like, yeah, someone true. who's in college. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. Yeah, it is stupid, because that's, like, a lot of money, and she's like, I have $8 in my bank. She has, like, no money yeah. in her bank account. And, and then all. another thing that kind of bugged me is, like, her friend is like, do you want me to just have my family write you a check or something? And I'm like... I feel like 99% of humans would be like, yeah. 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 I'll pay you back. Yeah. Like, yeah, that is true. It is stupid. So, I don't know. But I guess it is trying to show that she's, like, strong and independent and doesn't want to take handouts. But at the same time, I feel like someone like that would also not be the same person that would be like, yeah, I'll have the money by Monday. Yeah. It's, like, conflicting. Yeah. But anyway, that's a small gripe. But it's just there's so little that happens in this movie that, like, that's, like, the only dialogue in the movie, so you, like, remember <laughs> it. Um, I think the coolest thing about this movie is just, like, the scenes where she's, like, just sitting on the stoop, like, waiting to meet that guy, and she's, like, listening to her headphones, and, like, it's, like, a little montage of, like, her being in different positions and stuff like that, like, bored. Yeah. It, it It's, like, back to a simpler time. Or, like, when she's just yeah. walking through the house listening to her headphones and stuff. Yeah. I like those scenes. I like it too. Very slow burn. I, I honestly think this movie is like s too simple for its own good sometimes though. Like I know I know it is simple, but I mean it's really like the third act is really basic. It's like really really basic. Yeah, it is. I don't know. I think it's got its creepy moments though. Uh, I give it an eight out of ten. Uh, then we got uh, my second Survive 05. So we're on 387. I got like 400 of these. So what? What? 400 more? Well, I I I'm up to maybe like 400. What, what do you mean you're up to movies? I'm like, you know, I'm counting my movies here. This yeah. is 387. Yeah. I've watched around 400 total. For like this show? <laughs> what? Dude, what are you it. saying to me? You're not my sense. <laughs> You're saying, no, you're saying, what you're, you mean like you watched 400, so we still have to, you still have to review like 13 more. <laughs> yes. Dude, come it. on. <laughs> we just to put these up. I did, you what? Yeah, I you, split them last time. Yeah, but like you put them Come on, I don't know what, to, we wanted to be done in like a half hour. Let's go. Why on. are you saying come on to me? <laughs> you're taking, you're slowing me down. Go, just go, I'm done talking, bye. Okay, Cry Wolf. Um, have you ever seen this? Yes. Oh. What did you think? It, it was all right. It wasn't great, but it was not bad either. Okay. Um, it, you know, it's a movie. It follows, is like, people on the college campus, and there was a murder on the campus, or it's a high school prep, prep school. I don't know. And there's, a like, new kid in town. They play this game called Cry Wolf, where one of them gets uh, writing on their chest, and then they have to figure it out through questions and stuff. They decide to amplify this by creating a Cry Wolf thing at school, where they basically send out a fake email saying, like, I'm the person that killed that girl, and I'm going to do it again. Ha, 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 ha. And uh, they basically uh, get scared whenever, like, they think they accidentally sent the email to the real killer because they sent it out to the whole school, and the, somebody in the school probably killed the girl. Um, it's okay. It's not great. I, I kind of enjoyed it because it's like that modern slasher -y technology horror that was starting to happen, you know, with the emails and stuff like that. The killer looks cool. It 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 could have highly benefited from some like kills and stuff. It's not really a traditional slasher. It's like kind of just a slasher in the concept. Um, but yeah, I give it a six and a half out of ten. Next up, I rewatched The Village. Did you see this one ever? Yes. Uh, we were talking about it on the summer series because Jerry said it's like his least favorite movie ever or something, least favorite horror film. So I was like, let me revisit this. Do you like The Village? Um, I liked it when I first saw it, and then I revisited it, and I didn't like it as much, but I still thought it was okay. Yeah, well, uh, I thought it was good. It held up. I think it's creepy. 
Um, I don't mind the twist. You know, that if you, if you can't get on board with that, you're going to hate this movie. I do feel like the first time that I seen it, it was a little underwhelming. Um, and I do, did feel cheated, but I was okay with it this time. And I think this film is, like, really well directed, minus some, like, slow-mo scenes. I gave that an 8 out of 10. Um, and then we had our drive-in adventure, which we'll talk about later. Yes. Uh, then we watch. I watched King Kong for Survive 05, number three. Um, also, it was for 22 shots. And uh, yeah, it's. I watched the nearly three and a half hour cut. I'll kind of leave my thoughts on it alone, but I used to really like this movie. My opinion has changed. Either I really, really like it now, or I just, or I like it a little bit less, or I hated it, or I loved it. You know, it could be any of those. Right, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so that's... Uh, look out for that on the next show. Uh, then I watched From Beyond the Grave, uh, 1974. This is the Amicus Horror Anthology with four stories. The first story is called The Gate Crusher, which follows a man who sees... Uh, who buys a mirror. Oh, so the ra- the wraparound involves Peter Cushing in a antique shop, and the people that come in to buy items are the ones that the stories are about. Uh, so the first story was the gate crusher. This guy buys a mirror. The mirror has like an entity in it. Tells him to kill people. He does. Pretty good story. Probably the most violent of them. Uh, the second one is the act of kindness, which stars Donald Pleasance, and actually Donald Pleasance's daughter plays his daughter in this film. Ooh. Yeah, didn't know that at first, but uh, this guy is like kind of lonely. Hates his wife. Uh, he befriends this guy on the street after donating to him. He lies about being a decorated war veteran and befriends him and kind of falls in love with Donald Pleasant's daughter there a little bit. It's pretty cool. Uh, the fourth story, the third story is The Elemental, which is like about this like monster thing that you can't see that's like burrowing into this guy's arm. He meets a clairvoyant. She says she can get it fixed for him. It's pretty cool, but I wanted a little bit more of it. And the fourth story is The Door, probably my least favorite. It's about this guy who buys the door and uh when he goes in stop it's falling asleep um when he goes in it it's like another world and there's a bad guy in it it's it's okay seven out of ten pretty fun anthology none of the stories stand out as amazing but none of them are actually bad either uh next up is son of kong 1933 it came out one year or less than one year after the original 1933 king kong which is just insane to think about when you really think about it um, so, yeah, it was bad. It was horrible. <laughs> it was, like, such a pain. It's about the same dude goes back to the Skull Island to find treasure this time. The director guy finds a baby Kong. It's, like, way more, like, cheesy and silly. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry I knocked off your pop, son. Or something, <laughs> you know. And it's just stupid. I hated it. Three out of ten. Right, um, of course, I talked about all these. Uh, okay, last one for this. Uh, I have. Uh, yeah, this this will be the last one. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> shut up. Uh, a lot. Or sorry. <laughs> no. We did that last week. Inside 2016. Um, it's the remake of the 2007 horror film Inside, the French extreme film. It's basically the same movie up until a point. Uh, the entire third act is pretty different. I actually did not... Did you ever see this? No. I actually did not think it was bad, man. I thought it was all right. Like, I actually liked the movie. It's still set on Christmas Eve, which I think is nice. They changed the entire third act, which at least makes it more interesting to see, unlike the Martyrs film where, like, most, like, 90% of it's the same and they just change stupid stuff. Uh, it definitely feels like more Hollywood, more, like, Western but I thought it was all right. I didn't. I, I thought it was definitely watchable. Had I never seen Inside, I would think it was a good movie. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. oh, oh no. man! Oh. No. We're gonna deal with this siren, and we will be back in a second. Actually, I'm not done. I totally forgot. That no. <laughs> uh, so King Kong 1933. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing film. I mean, I tell the story on the show about how we went and seen it, and like I leaned over to you and I was like, "This isn't just a good movie for the time; it's a good movie for now." Yeah, you I thought were it was like, a very profound thing that I said that day. 
No, you were more like good mood. <laughs> no, I did. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I won't go too far into it. Just know that I love the movie. I think it's great. It was amazing seeing it in the theater. Uh, and then finally, this is actually my last one. Uh, I decided to give Black Water 2007 a watch because we're doing the sequel today. So, uh, yeah, I've always liked this movie. I thought it was pretty good at the time. It's from the director of The Reef. Rewatching it, I thought it was good but not great. There's actually a few things that happen in the movie that I feel are, like, a little bull crappy. Like, you know, I'm just like, oh, that wouldn't happen. Then I saw another movie that we'll talk about at another point where I was like, oh, this was way worse than than that. It made me think, like, it wasn't so big in black water. But, yeah, I mean, it's a small, simple movie. I mean, it's basically three people sitting in a tree for the entire movie um, with a crocodile in the water. You know, these people capsize their boat in the swamps. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I gave it a 7 out of 10. What are you doing? I'm fanning myself. Oh, because you look what? like you're trying to blow st- stinkies away. No! <laughs> Ew! Stop it, dude. Cut the that out. No, I go. It's your turn. All right. All right, I'm going to go make something to eat. Go ahead. But, dude, this is my house. I don't have food. Okay. Okay, so anyway, guys, I guess he's not going to, um, you know, be any informative while I give my reviews, even though I give, you know, my two cents on his. Buddy, no! Not my booberry! No, not my berry. No. Oh, okay. Anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna have to buy more booberry. Um, so what I watched was, and some of these, forgive me, I might forget about a little bit. Well, actually, most of these I know, but first one up, Exorcist, the beginning from 2004. Um, I watched. <laughs> Stop. Go away. <laughs> Go on. Okay, I watched Dominion. I, I believe I reviewed that on here. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. Either way, I reviewed both of these for my 31 Days of Horror, which will be on my YouTube channel, Carly317. Coming up here soon. Check that out in October. But anyway, Exorcist the Beginning. Um, Basically, the same plot as Dominion, which this one came first, of course. Um, And it's about, you know, Father Marin, uh, he has a really bad experience during the war, and it causes him to not want to be a priest anymore, so he takes on this archaeological project in, um, I believe it's somewhere in Africa, and um, while he's there, some exorcism devilly stuff starts to go down, and he's kind of torn between whether or not to, you know, bring his faith back into it, or just think like, oh no, everyone here is just crazy, and that's kind of it, and that's exactly what Dominion's like, and I watched these very close together, and um, I didn't realize that, I knew that they had redid the prequel to The Exorcist, because they felt that the beginning wasn't going to be good enough, but I didn't know that they literally did the same plot, and used the same actors, and the same... Uh, set. So, it was a little jarring to watch this. Um, I think Dominion is definitely better, but at the same time, I don't think either of them were that great, if I'm being completely honest, but yeah. Um, I, is that my microwave? What are you doing? Why is there a that's not a banana, that's a catnip. Oh, by the way, it seems like you have spilt rice in your microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Dude, don't go in there, it's dirty. Anyway, After that, I watched the Masters of Horror episode, Dreams in the Witch House, because it is from 2005, as per my dive, as per my jive, as per, what are we doing? As per surviving, my survive 2005. Um, yes, we decided to count the Masters of Horror hair, which is pretty cool, because they were only an hour hair long. And, uh, this was the second episode, and, uh, basically about some guy who is a college student working on his thesis he needs a place to stay he goes to this kind of crummy apartment complex or more so like a room complex thing it's very much like in uh doctor sleep where he just like rents out that room and that's where he lives or like shawshank where it's like kind of you could barely even call it an apartment but anyway he rents it out and then uh he you know meets this woman neighbor who is a struggling single mom of this baby and he starts having these disturbing dreams that kind of, like, are telling him, yo, you should, like, probably kill that baby, and stuff like, like, stuff like that. Um, 
When I first saw this, I didn't like it too much, if I'm being honest. I just thought it was okay, but I enjoyed it a lot more this time around. Um, I like the atmosphere. I, I enjoyed the setting. I do, I always like that crummy kind of apartment, sucky living situation type of setting. So, I thought that was all well and good, and uh, the dream sequences were pretty interesting. So, I liked it. I think I liked it more than Incident on and Off a Mountain Road, which is, of course, the first episode of Masters of Horror by Don Coscarelli. Um... I forget who directed Dreams in the Witch House. So Stuart Gordon. Stuart Gordon. Um, thank you, buddy. So yeah, Stuart Gordon. Uh, and that is that. Or Stewie G, as I like to call. Him. So then after that, as per my Survive 2005, and also for the summer series, uh, I watched The Devil's Rejects. Um, ne didn't even necessarily have to rewatch this one for summer series. I feel because I, I feel like I know it off the back of my hand at this point, but I wanted to. Because I really enjoy this film, um, I'm surprised by how much I ended up liking this, because, you know, I first saw it when I was rather young, and I was kind of like, okay, that's okay, it's a little much, but, um, I think it's honestly like a modern type of masterpiece at this point, um, I, it's definitely, obviously, Rob Zombie's best movie, and, uh, Oh, that's okay. You can have those. Those are gross. <laughs> I wasn't eating them. Anyway. Oh. No! Not the chicken fingers. There's probably a cat hair on it. That looks gross. <laughs> Dude, ew. The, the five second rule doesn't apply in my house. Um, anyway. Devil's Rejects, what can you say? It's a great film and uh, just a fun story. I, I, you know, I just love the characters in this. It's a fun movie. It's a brutal movie. All mixed in one. And it's great. 10 out of 10. Then after that, um, for, again, for the summer series, I watched The Mist from 2007. And The Mist is another fantastic movie. A uh, near masterpiece besides the CGI. That's the only half a point that I dock on it is uh, the kind of crummy effects there. But other than that, I think it's great. I think it utilizes all its characters super well and, uh, you know, does a good job of making character development with everybody. No one's really kind of just a background character in this. And you have just so many little subplots and conflicts going on as they're all stuck in this grocery store. I just think it's a great movie. You know, it's more about the people than it is the monsters outside. So, um, I really enjoy that one. I gave that like a 9.5 out of 10. Then after that, uh, checked out Wrong Turn from 2003. I had this on VHS and just wanted to watch it one night and um, yeah, it's also a pretty darn good movie. I had only seen this one once before and that was several years ago so didn't really remember a whole lot about it but uh, was curious to see if I still enjoyed it and I did. I think I even liked it more this time around. Um, I will say that the main one of the main characters, her name is Carly in the movie. Yeah. I think she's very annoying and uh, super the like. The hot one. I get the one who's really annoying and is, and is like almost getting them killed like the whole time because she keeps screaming and like wanting to stay for her boyfriend who's clearly dead. Um, yeah, I hate characters Jeremy like Sisto. that. Yeah, Jeremy Sisto, who is hot. Um, he is in this movie as well, which I is kind of cool because I didn't even realize that, you know, first time around. I think I saw this before I saw May, so I never really would have made that connection, but, uh, it's a good movie. I think it's got scary moments. I think the, uh, you know, the bad guys look pretty creepy and menacing, and it's like a backwoods film, and I like that setting, so I enjoy it. Then after that, I watched, uh, Pet Cemetery, the original 1989, with my mother, um, brought over her house the one day just to have something to watch because uh, she was bored and I was bringing her groceries and she said she she said she thought she saw this movie before when it first came out and hadn't seen it since but then when we were watching it she was like I don't even know if I ever saw this all the way through because she said she barely really remembered anything so um, it was kind of cool you know we were kind of uh, laughing at some of the stuff that didn't hold up as well for us this time around but um, I like Pet Cemetery. I feel like she didn't like it as I feel like she just kind of thought it, like, was another cheesy 80s movie, and that was kind of that, so I think she still liked it, but she didn't like it for the same reasons I did, if that makes sense, but... It's a stack. Uh, it's a stack? You have a freaking stack in your freezer? My mom bought me a stack. Dude, you yell at me when I have stacks without you. Well, now I have stacks without you. Anyway. 
Um, so after that, I watched Jeepers Creepers 2001, which I actually just bought on DVD at the Dollar Tree recently. I have it on VHS, but I did not have it on DVD, so I grabbed it on DVD, and I love Jeepers Creepers. I think it is a great monster type of film, and I think it's very creepy and effective still to this day. There's a lot of creepy parts, you know, you got the crazy cat lady parts, you got the creeper himself, I think it looks really, really good, um, just that shot of them driving by when he's throwing, uh, those mysterious, uh, sheets down the pipe, and then he, you get that shot of him, like, staring at them as they drive by, it's super scary, and, you know, it's done in broad daylight, but it's, uh, manages to be, I think that makes it even more effective, is that it's done during the day where you wouldn't expect to see something like that, um, I think it's really scary. I, I like the characters, the brother and sister dynamic, how it's kind of like Derry's like the annoying younger brother and then his sister's kind of the bitch older sister who's always annoyed by him. I think it's uh, very realistic and um, yeah, great movie, one that I grew up with and one that I love. It sucks that Victor Salva sucks because he could have done great moves, but instead he liked to rape kids. Anyway, um, after that I watched Ring to Ringu 2, whatever, 1999. That's the last one. What do you mean? That's the last one. Ring 2. What do you mean? That's the, your last move. No, I have like three more. Buddy, you No, watch. Ringu 2, buddy. I watched both of the Ring 2s recently. Why? Because one's a 99 move, which is for my 31 days of whore hair, and the other one is a 2005 move. So any anyway, Ringu 2, uh, this one is obviously the sequel to Ringu, which came out just a year before that, in 98, and funny thing about this is, I remember when I was a kid, I really liked the Ring, and the Ring 2, and, uh, we, I, I didn't know much about, you know, Japanese movies or anything like that, and I saw Ringu 2, I think we might have rented we either rented it or just bought it on DVD because we found it somewhere, me and my mom, and I brought it home, and I played it, and I was like, what the heck, this is in Japanese, I can't watch this, and my mom is also an idiot, and she was like, you're right, this is in Japanese, it's a subtitle, we cannot watch this, and I, I think I still wa was just watching it and like not knowing what was going on, and it was just in Japanese, and I wasn't even reading the subtitles, but, because uh, there was aspects to it that I remembered watching it this time around, but, Anyway, that's just the story of uh, me being dumb and my mother also being dumb. Um, I, honestly, I was kind of disappointed with this. It has its creepy moments, but it, it's kind of boring. It's more investigative, more so than even the first one, where it's like trying to figure out more of what's going on with the cursed tape and the girl and stuff like that. And, um, you know, you get some scenes of uh, Sadako up close, and I just don't think she's... I don't like the look they give her, especially at the end, there's a scene in the well that I just don't think looks that scary or anything like that, so it was a major step down, because I do like the first one, and um, this just, I thought this one would be just as good, but it definitely was not, not at all, so um, I think I gave that like a six and a half, but you know, it's okay. Um, after that I watched Amityville Dollhouse 1996, um, this was one I had never seen before, one of the later sequels, of course, and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, this one is about this family that moves into a house that the father built, and it turns out he built it over the old Amityville house that had burnt down. He built it on the property, and he's investigating an old shed that happens to have been left on the property, finds a replica dollhouse of the Amityville house, and gives it to his daughter for her birthday. She's all excited. It's in her room. And then weird stuff starts to happen around the house. Uh, yeah, I thought this was a lot of fun. Much like uh, The Evil Escapes. It's just very fun. You know, it's got its cheesy moments. It's got very cheesy kid characters. Um, kind of thing is, like, it's two parents who have been divorced. Or the one, the dad's dead. And the other one, it's like the mom is just, like, not in their life. And then dude remarries this woman she's got like a dorky son and then he himself has a teenage angsty son and then you know innocent daughter who gets the dollhouse so it's got that going for it's got cheesiness and um just some ridiculous moments with the family but 
Um, I thought it was pretty fun. I enjoyed that quite a bit. I gave it a 7 out of 10 for enjoyability. Yeah, I like that one too, honestly. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Oh, that I might like, be my favorite one. Yeah, they're all kind of fun. Yeah, not my favorite one out of, like, you know, the first, counting the first two, but, like, my favorite of the later sequels. Um, then after that, I watched It Waits, a 2005 movie. I watched this on Tubi. Um, it's basically, like, a monster movie. There's, like, this girl. She's, like, a... A ranger of sorts supposed to be looking after this area and um, she kind of has like a drinking problem because uh, she was involved in a tragic car accident recently that she cannot get over so she kind of has this problem and then there's this other guy who uh, becomes a little bit interested in her and he's also working there and um, all along there's like this monster that is waiting um, I thought this movie kind of sucked um, Mainly because the main actress I thought was just awful. Uh, she was bad at acting. I didn't care at all about the backstory. It just doesn't even seem needed, honestly. And I don't care about the blossoming relationship between her and the guy. It's just a whole bunch of not caring. And then the monster was actually kind of decent looking. It, it actually reminded me of the creeper from Jeepers Creepers a little bit. Because he's like a human figure and he has these wings. And he's pretty menacing, but... You don't really get a ton of him, and um, at that point, it's like, I just don't care. I did not care for this movie too much at all. It was not that good. It waits. That's what I'm talking about. Hmm. And, um, so yeah, that was a 2005 movie. Wake up. And then, finally, I watched The Ring 2, The American Ring 2. I just watched that tonight uh, while waiting for JPEG to get done at work. And, um, yeah, this movie I liked a lot when I was a kid. I liked this one and part one. It's one of those things when, you know, kind of like what Jay Pig here said about uh, liking all the Elm Streets, even though some of them are stupid. It's like you're just having fun with it. That's like me with The Ring 2. I always thought, like, yeah, that's just as great as the first one. It's so on par, and it's actually scarier because it's got some more in it a lot. Well, that's actually takes away from the movie quite a bit, and um, they try way too hard to make it like a ghost film with Samora being around every corner, where the first one succeeds in just building on atmosphere, and what are you doing? Continue. Building on atmosphere and um, stuff like that. This one is more just like, oh, we're going to see how much we can scare people by showing Samora a whole bunch and doing a bunch of bad CG deer and Samoras, and uh, we're going to have... Samora. Samora. I say Samora. Yeah, Samora what? What? <laughs> Shut up, dude! You're annoying. How can I have some more when I haven't had anything yet? <laughs> you spit it. Slappy. I'm giving you it. Spit it. I know, dude. You made me mad. Put those narcotics away. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, the ring two is not that, that good of a move, is what I'm trying to say. And, um, I see why people do not like it, and I understand, and I am so sorry. So that is all my movies. Okay, uh, so we also went to the drive-in, uh, a second one. Uh, this was for a sort of, like, creature marathon thing. Yeah, it was the drive-in Monsterama that they do in, uh... September. Yeah, it, it's called the Riverside Drive-In, and they do it every September, um, usually mid-September weekends. And it's kind of like we, we always talk about we go to the April Goals drive in we mentioned it a few times like on our trip down movie lane and stuff like that but they do one in september they do one in april april is usually like 80s classics and slashers and what what's wrong the trip down movie lane that was our third episode did we call it that yes and that I made was it up. so cool oh you made it up yeah that sucked oh. <laughs> i was about to say that's a cool name but then you, i thought about it and i was like no actually that sucks Anyway, yeah, so, uh, we went to this drive-in, and the September one usually plays, like, weird stuff that I don't like. <laughs> it's, like, monster Ham stuff. Like, it'll be or Hammer, or... Stuff. More older stuff, like, April is usually, like, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. While, mostly 80s, but, like, while the Monsterama is, like, 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, pretty much. Or, like, B-movies, like, ones that aren't as popular and stuff like right. that. But, 
Yeah, so we went to this, and uh, we only went the one night, um, which was Saturday, the second night. Um, and this drive is only like an hour and a half away from us, hour and 20 minutes or so, so mm -hmm. it's not... I ha we would have went the first night, but I, I did have uh, <clears throat> either work or 22 shots, I can't remember. It's work. Um, and then, so yeah, we went the second night, which the, really the main reason I wanted to go the second night was for the third film. Right. Which, if they would have played first, I probably would have left, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, because they, the lineup was uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Which uh, we've seen in the theater before, so it wasn't... Yeah, oddly enough. It wasn't actually, like, exciting. Yeah, and, um, which I already knew my opinions on it, and then... King Kong Escapes was after that. That one was okay. I mean, it had its fun moments. I feel like I didn't pay that much attention to it, but what I did pay attention to was like kind of entertaining. So. Yeah, I fell asleep through a little bit of uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Yes, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the third one was Hold up. not a um, movie. <laughs> no, the... Uh, <clears throat> the uh, King Kong Escapes? King Kong Escape, or oh, what I wanted to say was, how weird is it that the same, like the next weekend, so we saw those on Saturdays, and like the following Friday, we were recording a King Kong show yeah. on 22 Shots. By the way, that was not planned. It yeah. literally just happened. Too bad they weren't playing King Kong 1 and then King Kong 2005 at the drive-in. <laughs> well, I, I would have not wanted to stay for King Kong 05. Dude, that would have sucked. Yeah. Um, but, but no, the, uh, so I watched, you know, I decided to throw in Son of Kong. Mm. I was thinking about watching 76 or like King Kong Lives or Skull Island, which Skull Island mm. I actually really loved. It's probably my favorite King Kong minus the first one. Honestly, like, 76 used to scare me. I used to think King Kong was really scary in that <clears throat> Nerd. <clears throat> Continue. All right, dude. You know what? Go home. I'll take your chick. Where do you eat all the chicken? Yeah. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, come <laughs> back. Um, okay, uh... And the third film was... The Legend of Boggy Creek, which was a 72 move. Yeah, and I loved it. Yes, it was restored and looks like a movie and yeah dude so like it, anybody who's seen legend of boggy creek knows that the transfer is like god freaking awful mm -hmm. like it sucks <laughs> like i have the cheesy flicks dvd yeah and it just looks like a pile of Poop. a pile of scramble scramble yes uh, and yeah, it sucks, but you know, I've always, I, I haven't always liked that movie. I thought it was actually pretty bad the first time I seen it. And then when we watched it for 72 moves, I was like, dude, this is creepy as hell. And I liked it watching it this time. I actually thought it was scary. You could see Bigfoot a lot of times. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Cause yeah, it's like. Yeah, watching it for 72, it felt like, it's like, oh, this movie makes you leave it up to your imagination. But then you watch it here, and you're like, there's actually Bigfoot standing right there. Yeah, I thought it was, form. I thought it was just dark leaves. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, I thought, I was worried it might actually hurt the movie. Yeah. Because, like, you hear stories about, like, directors from back in the day, and they're like, it looks like crap, and they're like, we'll put it in the back, they'll never see it. You know? Yeah. Or they, like, they won't even be able to tell that it looks bad. Yeah. So, uh, that's kind of one of those things where I was worried, but it turned out pretty good. And honestly, like, I feel like that movie's, like, super authentic. Like, it just feels like what it's trying to do, like, be, like, almost like a documentary. Yeah, it does. Um. Yes. Yeah, it was pr pretty cool. Pretty cool to see in the drive-in, and, um, we didn't stay for the fourth movie. That would have been The Brain That Never Dies, and, um... The brain, or the brain that, what is the brain that wouldn't die? Yeah, um, which I own on DVD, or Blu-ray, but I've never seen it. Um, I would have liked to stay for it, but it wasn't really worth staying up that late for that after. I, yeah, I have it on, um, VHS. I forget where I got that, but it was, I thought it was cool, but, and I tried to watch it one time on VHS. Mm. And like the quote, like the audio, I couldn't understand the audio because it was like really like that, like if you're talking into a microphone too close type of audio. Yeah, I gave King Kong 
uh, versus Godzilla, like a six out of ten, mm. and I gave King Kong Escapes like a five or four point five out of ten. And then I gave <clears throat> Legend of Boggy Creek a 8 out of 10. Jesus. Yes. I don't know what I get. I think I gave King... I think I also... I give King Kong versus Godzilla a 6 out of 10. King Kong escapes probably like a 5.5 and then a 7 probably to the other move. So. Alright, so now it is time for your blind spot. Right. And that was Reservoir Dogs from 1992, which is a movie directed by Quentin Tarantino. Right. And it is about these guys who get together, they don't know each other, and they get together to perform this job where they're supposed to, what, to rob a bank? Is that the main goal? Right, but keep in mind, the... They all don't the, – the, the crew doesn't know each other. Yeah. But the guy putting it together knows the people in the crew. Right, yes. But the, yes. And he gives them all, like, fake names, which is just Mr. Something Color, like some sort of color. Yeah, he's like, you're Mr. Blue. Yes. And he's like, he's like I don't want to be Mr. Pink. He's like, you're Mr. Pink. A guy on another job is Mr. Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. What purple. Purple. Mr. purple. He's like, how about Mr. Purple? Steve yeah. Buscemi. And he's like, you're Mr. Pink. I got on another job as Mr. Purple. He's like, can't, why can't we pick our own names? And he's like, I've tried <laughs> to let that happen before and it doesn't work. It <laughs> yeah, it's just like funny because you're like, did he really like try to let that? Like, yeah, <laughs> like he like let them pick their, it's like childish. He's like, it doesn't work. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, they're supposed to do this, you know, do this job and then it goes completely wrong and um one of them ends up shot and is pretty much bleeding out so they go back to this like meeting mr. spot orange. yes mr orange i don't remember them all but um they go back to like this meeting spot and they're trying to figure out what they shall do and you know you're as the movie goes on you're kind of seeing um how each of them got to the point that they got to, like how they all got involved with the job and such and um they basically, there's like an undercover cop who's was in on it that they did not know about, and they're trying to also find out like who the heck set them up and how this all went wrong. Now, I watched this movie twice. Right, because the first time you didn't give it the time of damn day. Yes, I struggled to pay attention to it because it really is just a dialogue heavy film. That is the main focus. Um, when you think about it, it's kind of simple because it's like mainly kind of in that location like that meetup spot like once everything goes wrong they just wind up back there and there are it's just a lot of like them talking and yelling at each other and then you are skipping to scenes of like this one guy who just got out of prison and uh he's like getting hired on to do the job and then you have this other guy talking to someone to do, like j you're just getting that and that's kind of like the basis of the movie and i wasn't too into it at first so jp yelled at me and I had to rewatch it. And when I rewatched it, I definitely liked it a, a good amount more. Um, I appreciated the dialogue more, and I understood like everything that was going on. And you know, it's got its funny moments. It's got its like quirky moments. And um, <clears throat> I like how bloody it is. Like I just love how oh the yeah, shot they, they and kill just, it. Yeah. And then that guy, like he's laying on the ground. Like by the end of the movie, I'm just thinking like if I lose. Like, me, myself, thinking of myself, when I lose, like, even a little bit of blood, I faint. And mm -hmm. this guy's laying on the floor, his face has no color in it, and there's just a puddle <laughs> of blood. And I'm like, this I would be dead right now. Yeah, he's was... bleeding out heavy. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, he, uh, there's a rat somewhere in the crew. Yeah, that's you what, know I what I mean. Yeah. So, um, that whole thing, uh, we, you know, deals with that. Um, it has a really good cast. You got Harvey Keitel as Mr. White. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Tim Roth as Mr. Orange, Michael Madsen is Mr. Blonde, aka Vic Vega. 
Uh, Chris Penn is nice guy Eddie, probably one of my favorite characters in the movie because I just like his, his performance so much, especially when he gets mad. Yeah. <laughs> he starts like spitting and stuff. But Chris Penn actually died pretty young. He was only 40 years old when he died. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, that. In 2006, he uh, had a heart attack. Oh. And um, he was actually uh, the voice of one of the corrupt cops. Uh, I think. I think it was. Yeah, he plays a character named Eddie, a corrupt cop in San Andreas. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he voices the character of uh, Eddie, which his name was Nice Guy Eddie in the movie. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> Steve Buscemi is Mr. Pink, who is probably the best character. Yeah. He's super funny. He's being Steve Buscemi. I never knew Steve Buscemi. Bu- Buscem- I never knew st- old Steven. Um, I didn't realize he had like a real career. I always thought he was another like just a background character in Adam Sandler movies. And then I learned that he actually has yeah. acted in some roles that are yeah he's respectable. Yeah, I think he's a uh, is he a firefighter too? Is he in in real life? I think. Oh, I don't. I didn't know. That. Um, also, uh, Quentin Tarantino is in the movie as Mr. Brown. <laughs> He's like, sounds like Mr. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to be Mr. Brown either. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, Lawrence Tierney is also in it. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, he plays the, the, the dad. Yeah, but I don't know who he is. He's like been in person. some stuff. Oh, yeah, so Steve Buscemi was a New York firefighter uh, from 1980 to 1984. During the 9-11 attacks, he actually returned to his old firehouse and volunteered. He worked 12-hour shifts for a week and dug through rubble looking for missing firefighters. Steve Buscemi is a goddamn legend. He's so up on set. Dude, he's pretty fishy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good dude, though, man. I, know, I love is, Steve Buscemi, is. dude. I would love to meet him. He's in an episode of Tales from the Crypt, one of my... Uh, favorites of like the later seasons yeah uh but yeah great cast uh i told you before this is my favorite quentin tarantino movie i think that it's just absolutely phenomenal um what'd you rate it i gave it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten huh right yes <clears throat> okay so i need to pick my blind spot yes uh do you have the list I have like Dude, a what? Like a ninety percent chance of it sucking. What? Yeah. No, dude. All right, I'm going to randomize. What is number eight? My sister's keep bear. I already did that one last week. Right. All right. Let's try again. Number five. The boy in the striped PJs. I did that one the week before. You are correct. Uh, let's randomize again. Number five. The Boy in the Striped PJs. <laughs> okay. I think I did that one already. Yeah. Uh, let's do it again. Number six. Oh, it's Polar Express, which is a Christmas movie. So not doing that one yet. <laughs> this, is, this is the record. This is rough. Uh, number eight. My sister. Come on. <laughs> yes, is this a randomizer, yes, dude? Dude, look. Eight, know, five, five, just, six. You're stupid. All right, let's go again. Number eight. <laughs> Crazy. This is being embarrassing. <laughs> alright, alright, let's do it again. Uh, number 11. I didn't do that one. I know I didn't. Panic Room. I did yeah. that one! I know. We, <laughs> dude, we've, done, we've been going through these. Number 7. 7. <gasps> the Wedding Singer. Damn it! Yes! It sucks. Dude, Steve Buscemi's in it. Oh, okay. I like Steve Yeah, Buscemi. he's great. He's got, he has a great Back to role. back Buscemi's. Dude, I want, I've been wanting to watch that. Maybe I'll watch that one with you. Like a good little podcast. Okay. Uh, alright. Now we are into our featured review. Review. <clears throat> uh, we have Blackwater Abyss here. Uh, came out this year from the director named um, uh, Andrew Trocky. Yeah, and Andrew Trocky uh, directed Blackwater as well as The Reef. The Reef is definitely his best movie. Yes. And, um, so this is a sequel, which kind is, of in name only. I didn't realize that's. I didn't realize the first Blackwater was all the way back in 2007, like that. Yes, if you would have listened to my review earlier. I, I did. I did. I'm saying like I forgot to mention it earlier. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So what is the plot? 
Five friends exploring a remote cave system in northern Australia find themselves threatened by a hungry crocodilia. Yes. Did you really say that? No, I said that. Oh. <laughs> Crocodile. Um, so it's yeah. Crocodilian, by the way. I, I liked what I said. Um, so yeah, you got these friends. They go exploring a cave. Spelunking, spelunking. if you will. No, spelunking. Spelunking. That's why. Spelunking. 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 Yes. Okay. That's what I said. Okay, so they're doing that. They go down into a cave, and um, they're down there, and they happen upon a body of water, and it's, like, really beautiful, and they're like, heck yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is why we do this. And then, like, I think before they go down there, the woman the girl's like, maybe we shouldn't do it. We might not be able to get out. And he's like, of course we will. And, uh, you know, with that foreshadows. Um... So they go down there, and they're chilling, and then all of a sudden, there is something scary in the water. Well, there's a torrential downpour that's oh, happening, yes. right, so and it floods that. the that cave system, so they get stuck in, like, an area, and there just happens to be a crocodilian. Yes. And the water is rising, so they don't ha- they can't be chilling down there for much longer. Of course, they don't have cell phone reception, reception because they're in the freaking cave, which is stupid to do. And uh, they're pretty much screwed, and they need to figure out how they're going to get out of there. And, of course, one of their friends becomes injured, too, so they have that to worry about, and that is the move. Um, I think, like, one of my least favorite aspects of this movie is, like, it's very hard to tell, like, where they are. Like, it's really dark, Mm -hmm. and there's not a good, like reference point for like how big the room the cave room they're in and like when they move like i'm like where they go in like yeah you just get scenes of them like crawling across like the wall and then suddenly it's like one character's over here the other's it's not that interesting to even look at it's just like a circle of water and they're all down there and it's dark and there's a crocodilia yeah um my least favorite thing is that it's very just paint by numbers in my opinion like I could pretty much tell how the whole movie was going to turn out from the start and it just does everything you would expect like you have you know the friends kind of being like maybe this isn't such a good idea and the other friend being like nonsense I know this cave like the back of my hand well not like that but like you know the friends who think they're the experts and they're like there's nothing bad can happen then something bad happens and then one of the friends gets like fatally wounded and they're like we need to get him to the hospital, but of course we're down in this cave, so it's going to be really hard to get him out, and also the whole cave is closed up now, so, oh no, so then it's like, we're going to have to split up, and the guy characters are going to have to go do something, and then they go and do it, and then, like, stuff starts going wrong, and then... And then there's a relationship reveal. Yeah, and which, uh, you know, it just kind of that even becomes kind of obvious that like something's like up with that like halfway through it and it just seems kind of <laughs> typical to have like turmoil between the characters yeah um but it's just like what they do is like so regular yeah you know what i mean they yeah it's they could have they could have done something different right <clears throat> um but yeah uh i think i think you're right i think it is kind of paint by number and i think the survival aspect which was in uh, the first black water is kind of missing a little bit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I think that it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it feels more like a movie. And I think that there's two ways you could do this movie, right? You could do it 100% straight faced, mm-hmm. in which if you do that, you need to have like more grounded, less movie feeling scenes. Mm-hmm. Or you could do it like Crawl, which. Yeah. That's what I kind of felt think. more like a monster movie, you know. It, it felt it didn't feel like a realistic survival thing. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, they don't do it like crawl, and but they have scenes that are like crawl esque in it, like yeah, the, they do. like the last scene, the one that you have a problem with. Mm. If that happened in crawl, it would just feel like normal. Yeah, I thought I kept thinking of crawl while watching this, and just even all the crocodile attack scenes feel kind of over the top it's just like it it feels like a shark it might as well just made it a shark movie at some point but yeah this movie it wasn't a bad film you know it's a film um and i do like the i'm not gonna lie i do like these types of movies it's i I compare it to like the 
Descent or 47 Meters Down sequel that I only saw the sequel, but it reminded me yeah, of that. Um, it's like he <clears throat> took like 47 Meters Down, Uncaged, mm -hmm. uh, The Descent, and Crawl and turned it into a movie. Pretty much. And uh, like I said, I do like them. I think they're easy films to watch. It was a very easy type of movie. It wasn't something that you really have to follow all these dramatic plot points. I mean, it's just a killer crocodile movie, a typical characters in peril film. Um, so I do think you could get enjoyment out of it. I just didn't think it was anything special. So it's, you know, that's all I really have to say. It was like, it just wasn't anything outlandish or crazy. So... <clears throat> yeah, I pretty much agree with you on that. Right. So, uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do some letterbox reviews. All right. <clears throat> um, I can read this one from Mr. Dustin Baker here. Seems pretty legit. It's a two and a half star review, and he said. So, is this the negative or the positive? I guess it'd be negative. I guess it would be negative. It seems like, yeah. Um, uninspired and lethargic <laughs> rehash of Killer Croc beats, stealing whole bits from The Descent, including asinine boyfriend drama to go with the caving aspect, but not really making you care. It's what you expect. Characters stuck in coming up with new developments to give them an excuse to go into the water and have the same exact chase over and over. The Croc bits are fleeting and never satisfying leaving us mostly with people we don't care about, shivering while stuck on a rock and wondering <laughs> who's boinking you. <laughs> um, though, the bit at the end where the stupid bastards end up back in the water made me laugh. Okay, so that, <laughs> that was really funny. Um, <laughs> that was like a painfully accurate review right there. Um, let me see if there's any... Let me see what the most positive review is. A lot of negatives. <clears throat> yeah, it's three and a half. All right, this one's good. Three and a half. Okay. Something about Australians and cave exploring I like. The cast was good. Luke Michael Mitchell looks a bit like Chris Hemsworth, whom I thought was in this at first, and a bit like Daniel Ferrell. Spartacus series. Love the croc shots. That was a horrible review. but Yeah, there wasn't like the very one. many croc shots, honestly. Yeah. And yeah, the, there was like another good review that pretty much just said, feels like a mashup of 47 meters down on Cage and The Descent, but I love both of those films, so that really worked for me. The claustrophobic setting adds an extra level of tension on top of the already existing crocodile threat. It's definitely a lot of what we've already seen before, but instead of monsters and sharks, it's crocs this time. Um, that's pretty much just, that's kind of, I, I agree I think with that. that um, I, I think they didn't really utilize the claustrophobia that well, though. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's not like... They could have did better with that. It's no descent, I'll tell you that. Right. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. This has been episode number... 35. 35. Uh, I have no idea what we're doing next week, but we will see you then. So, peace out. Wait, 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 what? wait, wait. we didn't rate the moves. Oh, good. Good job. Yes. Uh, I will give it a 6.5 out of 10. I just gave it a 6. All Solid right. 6. Solid 6, solid 6.5. So we will see you guys next time with another one.